The sun is always shining at Four Peaks Brewing in Tempe, Arizona, where solar panels power their production and a rock star team crafts spectacular beer. I'm Melissa Osborne. I'm innovation manager here and do barrel program, make everything under the sun. I'm Jim Roper. Pretty much held every position in the brewery, doing everything from taking out the trash, scrubbing <laughs> floors, to drinking beer behind the bar at the end of a long, right. hard day. I'm Chris Maya, GM at Four Peaks here, so I run the whole show. I'm Teddy G, and I wear Adidas. I've been drinking beer since I was a fetus. You don't want that one. <laughs> I'm known as the Chief Wow Officer. Before that, I was known as the Beer Traffic Controller. And you're at Four Peaks Brewing Company. Hey. There was four guys that started this company back in the day. When they found this building, they just found a hidden gem here in Tempe. It used to be an old creamery and ice factory. So it actually did all the distribution of all your dairy products and your ice for the whole valley. So the rail ran out back, horse-drawn carriages out front. So it was all distribution and we kept it that way. But now we're distributing beer. The building itself was built back in 1890, finished in 1892. Yes, it is haunted. There's a lot of ghost stories, but they're friendly ghosts, kind of like Casper that like beer. <laughs> Casper the Friendly Beer Ghost? We'll drink to that. Oh, uh, what's your name? Kilt Lifter is our flagship beer. You can't go wrong with Kilt Lifter. It's really approachable. It pairs with every kind of food. Really great caramel flavor, some toffee, minimal hops. It has a little hop just to balance out that sweetness of the wort. Four Peaks Brewmaster and co-founder Andy Ingram created the recipe for their iconic Scottish ale. I just really like the molasses cookie kind of flavor you can get out of it. And then it's super dry and clean and makes you want to have another sip. I want another sip. Mmm. -hmm. <laughs> well, I'd stick with that one if I were you. Yeah, just keep on making that. That's our <laughs> most popular. Popular is an understatement. To keep up with the demand for Kilt Lifter, Four Peaks had to build a brand new production facility. One that you could say took it to a whole new level. This facility at Wilson Street in Tempe is the largest single brew site in the state of Arizona. So I like to call this brewery the brewery that Kilt Lifter built. By the numbers, this brewery is about 100,000 barrels of capacity. If you're not familiar, one U.S. beer barrel is 31 gallons. Yeah. So it makes a lot of beer. It used to be just the four of us that worked here as brewers. Now we have a staff of over probably 30, 40. Yeah, close to 55 total. Andy Ingram said it best. It's kind of like, you know, when we were so busy back in the time, we were just a family here and we were busting our butts and, you know, we looking, you know, five feet in front of us. Before you know it, we were one of the largest brewing companies in America. Four Peaks Brewing Company started in 1996 as one of Arizona's first craft breweries. From the beginning, founders Jim, Randy, and Andy put sustainability at the forefront because beer is 98% water and they just set up shop in the desert. Obviously, water use is a huge deal for a brewery, especially a brewery of our size. Anything that we don't use in the process, we recirculate and reuse to alleviate our burden. Brewers, because we're ultimately an extension of the agriculture industry, we have a very keen sense and sensitivity towards the energy we consume and, and giving back to production and agriculture. A few years ago, we found a really uh, synergistic partner with uh, Perry Land and Cattle in Queen Creek, Arizona, where they come by and take some of our spent grain and feed it to their cattle. After that cattle is butchered, it comes into our pub in the form of beef um, that we call beer-fed beef. I want to know, are the cows drunk? <laughs> yeah, I know, that was, the, that was the chef's idea, actually, to call it the drunken cow, and it's clever. But no, they don't get drunk. So we do get the, we kind of call it the leftover beer from Four Peaks. Really, it's a, a byproduct of the brewing process called wort. It has more nutrition in it than the spent grain does. So the cows are able to digest the proteins and the long chain sugars and stuff like, like that that they need. It turns into muscle and then fat, and then it really comes out in the flavor. That's why the beef tastes different. So it's like a protein shake for cows. <laughs> yeah, a really good tasting one. I think that the reason the cows like it so much is because it's um, it's sweet, it's sugary. Well, I like it so much and yeah. it makes a great burger. So cheers to that. Yeah, cheers to that. Full circle sustainability, drunken cows and all. What else could Four Peaks do to reduce their carbon footprint? Why not slap 500 solar panels on the roof to power production? With the help of our friends at Anheuser-Busch, we can confidently say that 100% of our beer produced here is produced via renewable energy sources. Including Sunday Seltzer, America's first entirely solar-powered hard seltzer. 
All of the energy used in its production from cooling the fermentation tanks to powering the canning line comes from the Arizona sun. Cheers. Oh yeah, this is a tropical. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so good. Refreshing. Yeah. Over ice especially. Mm-hmm. I am going to tell you the truth. I have not been a fan of White Claw or the, you know, I'm just not a seltzer, a hard seltzer drinker, but I would yeah. drink this any day. This is so good. This is naturally flavored. Uh, mm-hmm. Lime and grapefruit are naturally sweet with agave. Of course, a natural product of Arizona yeah. too. So it's very good. dangerous though, you know. I mean, there's alcohol in that. Yes. <laughs> yes. I feel scary. like I want to have this for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> what have you done? Being from Arizona, we pick flavors uh, true to us. Citrus, obviously, for grapefruit. Prickly pear, no brainer, grows here. And then the tropical, the ladies in the lab at the supplier actually blended it together. So they're super happy. We're just super jazzed. It got to production levels as it is. Yes. So it's kind of one of my favorites. My mom was a baker, my dad was a butcher, my dad was a carpenter. So anything, I was going to make something. But I have all these flavors back there, always creating and give these guys a taste of what I have back there. And see you at six, really. I walk into the <laughs> office every afternoon. It's the first thing. It's something's being <laughs> handed to me. It's a taste. Yeah, and I want to work here. It's a daunting task. Yeah, wow. Showing up and having to taste 20 different yeah. barrels to find what, what the, the blend will be. Some barrels that I just want to package by myself and just be yeah. like, that one barrel is just the honey pot. The honey pot. We asked the beer traffic controller to point the way. So I can see Barrel Age Raj IPA right here that was uh, put in the barrel back in, looks like August of 18. So you're already looking at a beer that's going on uh, three years. If three years in the barrel sounds a little outside the box, rest assured, these brewers know their beer. We've always really been true to style. We wanted to make the beer as historically accurate as possible within uh, drinkability. Drinkability being, you know, the most important part but then we've done some definitely stretching of our wings and try yeah. some different styles, things that we wouldn't have done 10 years ago. Something we had never done was our hazy IPA. Oh. We like yeah. clarity in our beers, but hazy, we made it true to style that it is. There's a lot more hop in this than it would be in a traditional IPA or mm-hmm. something you would have gotten 20 years ago, mm-hmm. but we added mostly in the fermenter, so we're not getting any bitterness at all, Got really it. just a ton of aroma and flavor, yeah. and it's really tropical. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. It's like going on vacation. Mm. So our next one's a uh, Hobnut IPA. IPAs are still really king. It's a Pacific uh, West Coast IPA. West Coast IPA. IPA. Uh, one of the first West Coast IPAs, I'd say, definitely in Arizona. Very light bodied, light colored, but yeah. then just enough sweetness to balance with all the really cool citrusy, piney character. We have a beer for everyone, for sure. IPAs are still king of craft beer and outdoor adventure. Four Peaks donates proceeds from the sales of their IPAs to state and national parks through their Thirst for Adventure program. We looked around us and said, what does Arizona have uh, in droves? And it's natural wilderness outside. And a lot of our populace obviously likes to enjoy it. So we looked at that and especially with kind of climate change and, and urban sprawl of Phoenix, frankly, where it was getting encroached. So they saddled up to save their parks. And when the 2020 bushfire ripped across the mountains of their namesake, they showed up to restore the natural landscape, replanting the burn scar with Save the Suaros. We do a lot for the community right now. Like Four Peaks for Teachers, a program the founders started 12 years ago over beers at the bar with some of their regulars, who happened to be teachers. They were intimating to us how much of their own money they spend to supply their classrooms. One thing led to another, we set up Four Peaks for Teachers. We sourced and bought from suppliers like Staples and local office suppliers, things that they would use for their classroom. We'd have them come in and get a kit at the pub and take it home. I think the first year we did maybe 500 kits. Last year for 11th year, we did 11,000 kits distributed. We also added a component last year. We gave out 11 $1,000 teacher grants. One of the biggest projects I was part of was called uh, the Joy Bus Wow Wheat. So it's a new beer. Uh, came across actually in this room a couple years ago, Jennifer Caraway. She is a celebrity chef. She was on Chop season 36. She runs a diner that's a 100% a charity and they donate uh, gourmet meals to homebound cancer patients. So the diner is her number one source of funding. So obviously during COVID when restaurants shut down, she uh, shut down her funding. Where She wanted a brewery to collaborate with her and we became that brewery. We launched this beer during COVID and 50 cents of every case sold goes to her cause. I think we hit 
is it fifty thousand dollars I believe last year that we donated wow. to their charity just people have been loving it it's so good it's got a little bit of creaminess to it to me is that yeah, yeah, that's yeah the, the I think the oats, the oats yeah, yeah the I was body. wondering if that's what's giving the body yeah mm. really yep. soft yeah. soft yeah. but then that citrus cuts through sweet orange peel yep. and really great top note of the orange mm -hmm. so it gives you like the pulp and the zest all together in one and just really refreshing 5%. The good is really good with what we have here and uh, we're able to keep things going. We do get pushed to be innovative and actually be more sustainable and do what's right and do what's right for the community. In 2015, Arizona's biggest craft brewery joined forces with the biggest brewery in the world, Anheuser-Busch. It's elevated our game even more so during the integration process. First and foremost, we keep the founders involved. So Jim, Andy, and Randy are still here. We try to maintain the culture of the local brewery, but then we try to provide, from an Anheuser-Busch perspective, the ability to grow, whether that's financially, uh, developmentally, uh, in terms of beer distribution, et cetera. What do you say to the haters? The haters? I think they just don't understand. I don't think they understand what we go through and how we got there and how hard we're working. And we're still the same people that have been there since day one. So I don't see why there's a reason on hating on that, but maybe they need to go hug somebody, I don't know. It's always been more about the lovers, beer lovers, at Four Peaks anyway. Won't you let me dream that you might again? I mean, it's camaraderie, um, being creative, and just uh, watching people drink what we make and labor for every day and just see the smiles. It's great. I got into this because I want people to say, that's awesome. I want you to make it again. This is like family at Four Peaks. They call us like mom and dad. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's so great. I get to drink with mom and dad. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Thank you. Oh, what else can I do? Won't you let me dream if my dreams can